few people absent today, this could be helpful. So back in our classroom, uh, we all have notebooks that we don't have access to right now. Um, and one of the last things that we put into that notebook was a table. That we titled with X and Y. Does anybody remember some of the things that we put in that table to show what else happens with an XY table? Yeah, thank you. Output and input. We input on the X and that gives us an output for the Y. When I introduce this to you, we also, oh good, we talked about independent. Thank you, Selena. And dependent. That what comes out depends on what gets put in. That's how the independent and dependent happen. And yeah, it's appeared in the chat to me uh, privately. You were correct. That person who just sent that on their own. Um, I had us put this in our notebooks because of new terminology we were coming into. And it's domain and range. And that's actually what I wanted to review with us today or to help us remember is the domain goes with the X and the range goes with the Y. And we're gonna be playing with that today in our Desmos activity that like I said, is kind of like a puzzle. Um, just to further, we're not using this today, but a little bit more that was in our table that same day, I introduced you to what is called uh, function notation. Oops. And so we had also put things like this. We're not using that today, but just as a reminder of what was in our notes. What we're really working with today is this area talking about domain as being with the X and the Y is going with the range. Um, and before I leave my ability to write in front of you here, um, something else I want us to review from a while ago. Who remembers when we were dealing with inequalities and we were graphing them on the number line. If I said something was um, like this, what would we say I had just graphed there? We would have shown that X is greater than negative one. Do you all remember what would have happened if I filled this circle in? What did that change in what I had written for the inequality? Yeah, it means that it, X would be greater than or equal to negative one. So when we're dealing with inequalities, when we were dealing with this on a number line, if it was less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, our point was filled in. If it was just less than or greater than, our circle was open. Today in our Desmos, we're gonna be working with an activity that is on a coordinate plane where we will see that lines are solid for greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, and they are dashed or dotted when we're dealing with the not equal to ones. All right, so with those ideas in mind, let's move over to our Desmos. All right, so what we see here is interesting looking. Um, you can see it on my screen. I know it's paused for you still. <laughs> What we have here is a shaded part of our graph 
that's exploring domain. So a mathematician looks at this graph and says, something's wrong with the shading on the graph. What do you think it is? I'm gonna give you all a minute to just take a look at it and type into the box what you think might be the issue with this graph. It's not because the line is curved. We're gonna see even more curvy lines. What we're trying to capture is where on the X axis is the smallest number that we can have this line be between and what is the largest number. So we're gonna be able to drag this and try to fix it. When you think you have it fixed, move on to slide three. So here's what I dragged when I tried to do this. Uh, we were able to move the right line to try to get it matched with where that dot is. You'll notice in my inequality, which this looks really confusing, but it's gonna become really familiar as we continue to work. Um, mine says one is less than or equal to X, which is less than 4.1. It's this 4.1 that's the part we were trying to change. Um, I dragged it and it's a little bit over four. So I just wanna type in and make that four and that's going to make it correct. So I wanna talk through what this means here. And this is what I wish I could do a split screen like I can do in class with my dot camera and Desmos, but it's a little harder from um, remotely. This one is because of this one here. The four is because of this four here. We have the X in the inequality because we are looking at the domain. We're going along the X axis and that's why this is an X. We have less than or equal to here, which means that this is a solid line. And we have less than here, which means that this is a dashed line. So those are going to be things that we'll be looking at as we move forward into the other slides. I'd like you all to move to slide four. We have another curved line that we are gonna to try to capture the minimum and the maximum of our domain. And this time we can't drag the lines, we're gonna change the numbers. I'm hoping we can see Lily and Selena and V and Snit, Hector, Tofu, Tian, Prehensha, Magdalene, Kellen. Let's all try to stay with us together. I know it's Friday afternoon and we're tired of Zoom. We'll be there soon, almost to the end. All right, I wanna look at where this dot falls on this x-axis and it looks to me like it's negative 1.5. And then I want to look on the right and I see that that's a positive one. Does that look like with negative one and a half is my smallest and positive one is my largest, does it look like I've captured where this line, this curved line is falling? It looks like the area is right, but what's wrong with what I have here? Can anybody tell me in the chat what I need to fix? Yeah, the sign, the sign for the negative one and a half. Selena is telling me in the chat, this symbol can't be just less than, it has to be less than or equal to because this dot is solid and this dot is open. So I want this to be a solid line and I want this to be a dashed line. 
there are two ways to change the symbol. On my keyboard, I can type less than and then hit the equal sign and it's gonna put that on there. Or I can open this keypad and the symbol is one of the choices there. Okay. Let's open up slide six or five and let people do a little practice there. There is one correct answer here. It is related back to what we were looking at for slide four. See if you can determine which of those four is the correct one. So for slide six, you are gonna be typing the entire inequality. I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna go back a slide to where there was a box and I'm gonna copy this and bring it forward and paste it. And now I can adjust without having to type all the symbols. This is a crazy looking line, but what we're really trying to find is what is the smallest number on the x-axis and what is the largest number on the x-axis? Where does this point fall? Where is this place that I'm pointing to right here? All right, if I change this to negative five, I should see my line move all the way out to the left and it did. Now I'm lucky because I went and copied and pasted an uh, inequality where this symbol is less than or equal to, and this is a filled in dot. So does this line work completely? Yeah, it does. What do I need to change in this? I need to now try to get this dashed line to move over to where this open dot is. What number am I gonna put in? Yeah, many of you have probably already done it. Oops, I typed an 11. All right, let's take a look and see how people did on this. All right, for those of you who are staying with me and trying this out, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna open up slide seven and eight and let you try those on your own. Uh, because here on slide eight, we were given sections to drag. On slide nine, we're gonna to have to write them in. So I'd like you to come down here and just type in a function or you can copy and paste it from another page. Um, I copied and pasted this one from slide three. And I need to adjust it. I need this far right line to be here. If this is at one, two, three, that means I'm changing this number to a three. And then I'm also seeing that I have a dashed line here with a solid point. So I need to change this symbol to be less than or equal to. And then as we've learned in the past in a Desmos, if I click underneath that, I'm gonna create a new line. Again, I can copy and paste. And I want to now take what is this blue and have it fit this one here. Looks like my smallest number is negative two. And my largest number for this little line is negative one.
both of them are open. So I want to go change this symbol to just less than. And then I'm going to need to try to get this curved line in between two sections. So it's captured as well for its function. Its smallest number is, if this is negative four, negative five, negative six. It is less than or equal to, I'm gonna type in an X because I'm still doing things on the X axis. I need another less than or equal to. And my number here is negative three. Oops, I found a mistake. My red one, this line should not be solid. It should be dashed. Is that what you were just telling me in the chat, Arish? <laughs> Thank you. So I'm gonna give people a little time to finish up slide nine. I have opened slide 10, which gives you a preview of what's coming next. Oh, Snit, I'm sorry, I didn't see your first question, but you did figure it out when you saw me open that keyboard. View. And have us take a look at slide 10. Now we're going to explore range. The range is a set of Y values after we put in all the X values. So notice that the range of this function is Y is less than or equal to one. So um, this is an interesting point. Even though there's not a curved dot at two comma one, right here. Every point along the curve is a closed dot unless you actually see an open dot. So this is one because this is the, this is the Y axis now we're looking at and the highest point on this line is one. So I'm gonna show you this next slide and then I'm gonna open it for you to try it. We're looking at the Y axis now with the same line that we saw earlier. And we're gonna go up to the highest point, the maximum, and we're gonna come down to the lowest point, the minimum. And I want you to think about what this would look like. This would be a negative three. It's a solid line, a solid dot. So negative three is less than or equal to Y this time, which is less than three. So I'm gonna unpause and let you try that on slide 10 and 11. this. I think what I'm seeing people do is this point here is, let's see, negative one, two. They're like, well, it's close to negative two, but it's not all the way. We're not looking at where this point is. You want to look at where the line ended. And the line definitely ends on negative two. 
So I'm going to put a negative two here. I'm going to change this symbol to less than or equal to to get a solid line. And then my top ends at two. It's not just where this point is, it's that this line doesn't go above the two anywhere on the y axis. Go back and see, we've got a bunch more. Blue dots instead of red X's, blue check marks. Oh, I think I left mine as a less than. Oops, oops, oops. I'm wrong. This has to change to a less than or equal to symbol as well. There we go. So many details here. You just have to look like what's my lowest point? Are both of my lines going to be open or dashed or solid? And what's my upper limit? And then putting an X or a Y in here tells us if we're dealing with the domain or the range. <clears throat> All right, so this is an interesting one to play with. Let's see if you can capture the range for these pieces here. Again, you're gonna click on the left here and you can type in using this keyboard or your own keyboard, or you can be what my lazy self does, which was to go back to something earlier and copy and paste it and make adjustments so you don't have to type all the symbols again. Okay, we're getting really close to the end of this slide set. <clears throat> um, and I wanted to share what screen 14 says. I'm gonna pause you all, so just give me a moment here. Uh, when I unpause you, I just wanna remind those of you with lines going up and down, that means that you're writing your inequality with an X instead of a Y, which is fine if you wanna look at domain and range, <clears throat> but look, we're trying on this slide right now to get the uh, range. Here's the question that we are getting on slide 14, and it is related to our work on slide 13. Zeke claims that the function to the left should have three shaded regions for its range because it is a three piece piecewise function. Is Z correct? This is the exact same one we're looking at on slide 13. You've got this line segment here, this curved line here, and this curved line here. Do we need to have three functions to shade those when we're dealing with range? And I wanna go back and look at what some of you guys have done Let's take a look. Uh, Ariel, Hector, Joseph, Kenny, Mele, we've all, I see Selena, a lot of you have got these captured. Let's look at Mele's here. It looks very much like the rest. My question to you is, 
does melee need this blue part or is the little one captured within the red? All right, Selena is in the chat saying, yeah, she needs it. I don't know if she does. Uh, Lisbeth, can you zoom out on yours so we can see the whole thing? Okay, thank you for your clarification, Selena. Selena is saying the red one doesn't represent the little one. But remember, I've talked about maximum and minimum along the y-axis. This is Lisbeth's. And here's the maximum. And here's the minimum. Is this captured within the maximum and minimum of this function? Liz, I got it. It's OK. All right, now Liz's looks like mine, I'll be honest with you. I did mine in the student screen. That's what I did. I didn't change my color, but we don't need a third one for this. Because we're shading the regions for range, and this one here is within the same area as this, and this one captures this one. So this would be a two piecewise function. And I'm gonna encourage you all to go back to slide 13. And instead of putting a third one for the range, let's go back and do a little practice on domain. Uh, some of you did it on accident, but I think what could be really interesting here, I don't know how to change that. How do I change that color? Um, I'm going to try to find the domain for this biggest one here. And the domain is negative six. Is less than or equal to X. And I'm doing X on purpose. Is less than or equal to negative three. I type two negative threes, that's not what I meant to do. That's what I wanted. All right, some of you others out there, how did you change the color of your section? How do I change this over here on the red? I want it to be a different color. I want to do a different domain and see if I can capture this little one. Settings and click colors at this part here, Kenny. No. Well, I can play with it later. I want to see if I can find another domain that is capturing this little tiny one. And it's going to be negative three. No, nope, negative two is less than x is less than negative one. 
Somehow I got blue. I don't know what I did different. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to play on the same thing and see if I can find the domain and the range. We don't need to. But what I will say is if you would like more practice on this, I have another domain and range practice. that I am going to share with you. And I will put this in Google Classroom as well. Um, and I will also put in the recording that we have done during this lesson today. So if you wanna go back and look at things, you can.